Greetings, Retro Zoltan here. Before I officially begin, this is the review of the My Arcade Game Station Pro. If you're only interested in adding games, I'll provide a link to the second video on how to properly upgrade your system and or add games using the SD slot. With that, I hope in the end I do have something for everyone. So thanks for watching, and here goes nothing. Presenting the My Arcade Atari GameStation Pro. Okay, well, true talk here. I'm going to age myself and let you know that I really like Atari. Like the old stuff. Like Atari 2600. Before Mario had a mustache. It's what I was raised on, so pretty much that's what I played. So much so that I played it on my black and white TV. Can you imagine playing this? Yep, I was there. I lived it. By today's standards, it looks questionable, but back then it was everything, and you were hard-pressed to pull me away from it. I loved Atari, and still do. In fact, I love it so much I still have one complete in its pseudo-docking station. This particular one was given to me by my good friend Dave, who gave it to me ages ago, and I accumulated quite a bit of games over the years to beef it up. And even though I modded this to work on newer televisions, it doesn't do HDMI, so it's sort of been sitting in my closet with the many things I should probably be doing a review on, but I digress. So now that I'm done with all that, let's look at this thing finally. I haven't even opened the box yet and I'm impressed. It looks legit and boasts multiple Atari systems like the 2600, 5200, 7800 and Arcade. If you like Atari, this is probably something you've been salivating over already. But is it any good? Let's take a look and find out. I just wanted to quickly take note of the fact that my Arcade made this. I consider these guys the big boys when it comes to retro gaming. They make all sorts of systems, including a ton of handhelds I own that I intend on doing a video on in the future. But let's not let me get distracted here. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, Atari, Atari, okay. My arcade is promising that there are 200 plus games available on this thing, including some classics that I cherish, like Yars Revenge and Missile Command. And how is Breakout supposed to work if this thing needs a paddle? The box looks amazing and colorful, which is certainly meant to be put on a shelf somewhere. I got mine used, a bad habit of mine, but I would not be surprised to see it behind glass at a retail store somewhere. It goes brand new right from the hands of my arcade for about $100. But if you want to save a few, I wouldn't be surprised to find some people playing this for a while and getting bored with it and selling it online for less. And okay, I love the box, but are we to believe these two are related because they have the same color shirt? Also, you know what this kid's thinking. He wants to put his Nintendo Switch back on the HDMI 2 port. Opening the box is an impressive display. A main console, two joysticks, a few cables, and a box holding instructions and the certificate of authentication. The cables this comes with is an HDMI, which is convenient, and a USB-C charging cable. The joystick as I pick it up feels amazing. It's not the clunky, rubbery original Atari joystick, but I'm not upset by this. This has a good weight, it has lots of extra buttons, and it's of course wireless. The original Atari did eventually have wireless joysticks, but they were super heavy and looked like 1950s military devices. I thought these were rechargeable at first, but they seem to need batteries in them. You can't have everything, I guess. If you don't want to use batteries, you can connect the joysticks using the USB connectors on the console. You have to love the A button here, which is nice and clicky, and the most important if you're here for nostalgic purposes. Some old school gamers, however, like to feel like they're flying a plane, so the B button on top is just for you, as well as a trigger, which is button C. My arcade has all that covered, and the most exciting part of all is the dial on the top right, which replaces the desperate need for paddles. They're not as large as original Atari paddles, obviously, but they're certainly feeling amazing, and I can't wait to try some paddle action game. Moving the joystick around and playing with the buttons have me really impatient to turn this thing on, but I must stay focused and continue. Again, the base unit has two USB-C ports in the front if you want to use your joysticks without battery. While on the back, there's an HDMI standard port, a power and a pinhole reset button for emergencies and upgrades. Most important to me, and probably many others, is the inclusion of the SD slot. My arcade doesn't say so, only mentioning this is to extend save state slot, but I can assure you that you can add your own games. And, of course, I'll let you know how to add your own. So, what does the system have for games? How does it play? Let's finally turn this thing on and see. To power this on, you'll definitely need to connect the USB to a power source of your own, and into the back of the unit. Nothing unexpected here. HDMI, of course, as well, and after that, just push the massive power button and enjoy the rainbow of color. I'm impressed. With no SD card inserted, 
you're going to get a bunch of games you can start with. You can just grab one of the joysticks and start having at it. It's nice you don't have to do anything special with the joysticks, they just work. The Atari Game Station comes with a large assortment of games you can sort through. The main games are an organized delivery of Atari titles for the 2600, 5200, and 7800 systems, as well as some titles from the arcade as well. The list of favorite classics is pretty large, but still limited. Given game licensing, I'm not surprised, but my arcade did what they could do at least, adding some really good ones that bring you back for sure. Also off the main page is an assortment of bonus games that include 8-bit classics, 16, and arcade also. All in all though, in the end you're dealing with, as stated, over 200 games. It's good but not great when you consider the titles they're including to up the game count. Unless if you're a Noah's Ark 3D sort of person. Hey, someone has to like this game. Sleep, little goat, sleep. There can only be two. Gameplay, though, is excellent once you get over playing some of the non-Atari classics using a joystick. Trust me, it's strange playing platform games where your jump button is the one on the top of the joystick, but it's not the end of the world. The ability to save your progress in games is here, but only on certain games. Sadly, you won't really know until you try by pressing the menu button on your joystick to where it will tell you whether you can save your game or not. Speaking of the menu button, there are also other options you can try to make your experience more to your liking. Paddle games work as you expect using the little knob instead of a large one, but it's better than not having one at all, no question. Games I used to be good at, like Circus Atari, are like a brand new challenge. I didn't suck this bad back then, did I? I hope not. If you find that the paddle knob is too sensitive or not sensitive enough, you can adjust that in the menu also. Another thing I should mention is that my arcade is working on some alternative and rechargeable joystick, which I'm pretty excited about. One is a joystick with buttons, only they're all on the faceplate, which is kind of what I expected all along, as well as more of a traditional gamepad with a sort of D-pad and buttons off to the right. I'm guessing by the time I finish this video, they'll be available. If you don't like these options, there have also been some people experimenting and finding out that the Xbox One joystick, while for another system completely, seems to work great on the Atari Game Station system. If 200 games are not enough for you, if you're missing your Atari favorites or have a desire to play other systems, don't forget this thing has an SD slot. After it's loaded up with games, you just pop in your SD, boot it up, and choose SD slot to get started. So without too much effort, you can get your system to play even more Atari games that you are missing, like Pitfall. And how about those Tron games? Hell yes. And of course, one of my childhood favorites, Plaque Attack. Ah uh, yes, I bet this game is partially responsible for some of today's greatest dentists. Aside from Atari, you can also add Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, NES games, Sega Genesis, Sega CD, Sega Game Gear, and MAME Arcade. After that effort, it's like a total of 11 different systems. And if you do the official upgrade, you can also start adding Sega Master System, PC Engine and Super Nintendo games. Keep in mind a lot of these games won't work right or require more buttons than you have, but that's what changing the joystick out is all about. There's a lot going on right now with some people adding alternative joysticks, even wireless ones, and I'll post some interesting links to some people who are getting successful. Remember, my arcade added this SD on the sly and can't support it, so it's really up to the community to make it work. Having something experimental on a system like this, I consider a lot of fun. People are making new discoveries every day. There are communities even making custom firmware for this thing already that overhauls the system, something I'm going to try in the near future. My biggest hurdle in making this video is keeping up with what people have been discovering, and trust me, it's constantly happening. But I have to cut the cord sometime, right? And if you have any questions, please ask away. So is it worth it? If you were salivating over this before, you have nothing to fear. But if you're looking at this with a tilted head, then run for the hills. This is a nostalgic fever dream, if anything. And the games, while simple, are classics for those who like peeking back into simpler gaming times. If you're expecting a lot of your favorites, <clears throat> Pitfall, <clears throat> you're not gonna find it anywhere here. Sadly. But this is why it's so important to understand the SD slot and why my arcade included it and what it means. Your favorite games are just a file move away. And that's not all I have to say about the Atari Game Station Pro, so please look for my second video, which I plan on releasing at the same exact time as this one. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for your support. And as always, I'll see you next time. Like in the next video, seconds from now. Look, it's good for the YouTube algorithm, okay? So go ahead and check it out. Okay, bye. Wow, wow, wow,